Today on Driving Sports TV, we have an off-road adventure featuring two of the hottest cars you can buy, the Subaru Outback Wilderness and the Ford Maverick FX4. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Now before we head out into the wilderness, let's take a look at what we have here, starting with the Subaru Outback. This is the new 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. It comes standard with 9.5 inches of ground clearance and Yokohama Geolander all-terrain trail tires. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter boxer turbo engine, good for 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to a continuously variable transmission that sends power to all four wheels through Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system that is enhanced with dual function X mode. Price as it sits here with options, 39,965 US dollars, including destination. The Maverick is an all new compact pickup from Ford for 2022. This is a Lariat trim with the FX4 off-road package. That means it comes standard with 8.6 inches of ground clearance, and you can get it from the factory with Falcon Wild Peak AT3W all-terrain tires. Under the hood is a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine producing 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. It's connected to an 8-speed automatic transmission that powers all four wheels using Ford's intelligent all-wheel drive system. Because this is an FX4, it's enhanced with off-road traction programs. Prices you see it here, 36,515 US dollars, including destination. Now, I love the Subaru Outback Wilderness. It is one of my favorite vehicles you can buy today. But one thing I don't like about it is that massive touchscreen in the middle. I prefer physical buttons and Ford delivers on that. I do have a larger touchscreen, but it's basically just for Apple CarPlay. It doesn't do much else. I mean, it has obviously a backup camera and it also has satellite radio, but of those features, CarPlay is the only real must have for me. So far on this rocky road, the seating position is comfortable. I really like these seats. They're nicely supportive. I have driven more than 2000 miles in this truck. So a couple of great things I really love about the Wilderness is we'll start out with the main dash display. You got this awesome big touch screen display. Some people don't like that you, you know, don't have those physical buttons to use. So it's kind of a little wonky and uh, hard to use and navigate at first. But if you have the time to just sit here and mess with it before you start like taking it off roading, you'll figure out where everything is that you absolutely would need. So far, this dirt road is pretty comfy. Um, no big issues here. I know it's gonna get way rougher because of course I have filmed on this exact route before. This is a segment of the Washington Overland Trail, which is otherwise known as the Backcountry Discovery Route, uh, the BDR. And the section we're doing today is just south of Ellensburg, Washington. We filmed a whole bunch of different cars here. I even took a Ford F-150 hybrid up it. Today, we're not planning on going just to the towers. We're gonna go all the way to the other side. That way we should get a really nice taste of all of these features in the real world. So who do you think is gonna have the better rig for today's adventure? You know, obviously I'm gonna go with the wilderness, but you know, there might be some tricks that you have to pull with your car. Who knows? And I know you kind of like the whole truck form factor, don't you? I do. You're right. So my truck here is about $37,000. How much does your Outback Wilderness cost? It'll be about $39,000. Is that a big difference for a regular buyer, do you think? Not really. I don't think that's going to, you know, make anybody not want to buy this. So if you were buying a car and you had your heart set on a turbocharged engine with 250 horsepower or more, would you even consider a slower, naturally aspirated vehicle? Or would you say that's just like off the table? I'm going to go with off the table. I think my favorite part of this whole course is really the bowl at the end, if we can get there with enough sunlight. Uh, we have a short day today, so hopefully if we can get there, then we can really 
compare these two vehicles and how the different all-wheel drive systems function. It is interesting that even on courses like this where you know what the general layout is. From month to month, ooh, I just hit a rock. Uh, from month to month, um, it changes, you know, throughout the seasons and you just don't know what you're gonna get, like that rock that I just hit. <laughs> and that right there is why one extra inch of clearance is good. So this used to be a toll road, and as a toll road, people would pay the equivalent of today, $250. But it cut a lot of time off of the transit between one valley and another. People would bring their goods over to Ellensburg for sale, which is right on the, the rail line. For some people, it made sense. Now, you might think, well, how did they get wagons up this? It's too tight in the corners. Some enterprising gentlemen actually built turnstiles. They would put the wagon on the turnstile and spin it. How crazy is that? Luckily today we have cars and they're a heck of a lot easier to drive. <laughs> you guys are gonna hate me for saying this. Well, maybe some of you, but I have always had an issue with short bed trucks. You have as much room in the bed as you do back here. Like why even get a truck? That's another reason why I'd go with this over the Maverick. So up here is a feature that I like to test out some of the more advanced off-road systems. Um, it basically is a cut in the road with a small ditch that removes traction off one of the wheels. Now, if we do this in say a 4Runner or a Lexus GX or in anything with good articulation like a Bronco, uh, it's just going to reach down and it's no big deal. However, these are unibody vehicles without a lot of articulation. So it's not going to be able to reach that rear wheel down and touch the ground. Because of that, there is no traction on that wheel. Now without an advanced off-road system that wheel would just spin free and all the power would go out the free wheel because these are open differential vehicles. However, uh, both the Subaru and the Ford have features that enable brakes to grab that spinning wheel and redistribute power into the system. That is of course a very over oversimplified explanation but I think it gets to the point. Okay so right here I am going to engage a mode seems like a great place to test out some of the advanced off-road modes. I am going to use the Ford rock mode. Do you have a mode? Yeah, I'm going to use the X mode stage one. What do they call that, that, that one version? It's snow and dirt. And for those watching, snow and dirt is what's on all Subarus with X mode. Uh, the type two is exclusive to the wilderness because it's an advanced type two. So I'm going to do mud ruts. That should minimize wheel spin and get us through it without any issue. And that's all I'm doing. No, no, other, no other changes here. The intelligent all wheel drive should push power to the wheels that need it and get me up the challenge segment. I just keep the throttle in and it'll sort it out. And there we go. Now, the downside with these systems is they do tear up the road a little bit because it relies on wheel spin before it stops the wheel from spinning. Whereas a system on the 4Runner, GX, um, a Ford Tremor, you know, any of those type of things uh, would put the power down to begin with. And of course, they're touching the ground because they have better articulation. So that is a better system, but this is a nicer system to drive every day. We're gonna switch on our X mode to dirt and snow. Here we go into this big rut here, big dip. This is usually where we have the issues. I saw the Maverick having a hard time, so we're gonna just gonna push through, push through, push through. There we go. Perfect. All right. Neither of these vehicles are designed uh, for rock crawling. They are for getting you to your adventure. And the adventure usually has some kind of a road going to it. Usually. Hey Carlina, you want to switch vehicles? Yeah, I'd love to try the Maverick. Man, this interior is so different. I kind of like the big touchscreen, it does look good, but the 
physical buttons on the Maverick are so much better of a choice. The hell? Okay, so for this one, to get it out of park, like it's the twisty knob, but it's not doing anything. You have angered the vehicle. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, so, so your foot's on the brake. Foot's on the brake. Um, so no key detected. Is that part of the problem? Well, I don't know. Oh, it says no key detected. So it will not let you go into drive without the key. No. That's fascinating. So I was like, what the heck? No is car I've ever done has done that. Nice so one. now try it. Oh wait, that's the wrong key. That's a Lexus. <laughs> I got the right key here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. So it now, because you have the key, I guess it just took hmm. a moment. So apparently you need the key to go into drive, which is weird. I've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's go okay. on. We learned something. So I am really impressed with the interior of this car. It's actually really gorgeous. You know, at first I was fine with the Maverick, but once I jumped into this Outback, I was like, wow, this actually feels way more comfortable. It's smoother riding. It seems a little bit quieter too. So I'd say that like overall, the Maverick is fine, but this is better if these are the type of roads that you're gonna drive on. It's so nice. I feel like this is a classier driving experience. Now, ultimately, is one just better than the other? Not in terms of pure drivability. I mean, that one, again, I was fine in until I got into this one in these road conditions, at which point I'm like, whoa, this is way nicer. Now, if you want a truck bed, you have no option with this because, of course, Subaru doesn't make the Baja anymore. I mean, that's a dead product for a long time. This is a really nice vehicle. I do enjoy this. I do kind of want to get back into my truck though, so I think we are going to switch again. We should be coming up to the uh, crest here pretty soon. We just got a couple rough roads to get through. So here we have a really tight corner as we go down this really steep hill. Uh, I wanna see, do you bet I can, I wonder how high I can lift a wheel on this one. And actually I'm gonna turn on the hill descent control system and we'll let it see me through. We'll see if this is slow enough. So I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting the car do its own thing uh, with individual wheel braking. And yeah, I kind of bumped the front left a little yeah, bit. That that nice. Thank you. Of course, bad for off-roading, but it looks good. <laughs> okay, your turn. With this wilderness, you can basically just put it into your X mode and that will also engage your hill descent. All right. Let's see what we can do here with getting any rear wheel lifting. Oh, and you can hear that churning and that grinding because that heel descent is uh, kicking in. It's helping me down extremely slow at two miles an hour. <laughs> All right, but I think I got some lift in the back. So hill descent control in this vehicle doesn't give me a lot of options. Basically, it'll match the speed that I'm rolling when I take my foot off the brake. Right now, it is going three miles per hour, which is the minimum. If I hit the throttle and then let go, it will match that speed. I'm now doing six. So let's put my brake back on and we're at nothing and I release it and now we're at three. 
Now, some other vehicles, like in the Jeeps, you can uh, control by setting your cruise control, and it'll set the speed accordingly all the way down to like one and a half or one mile per hour, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. But again, this isn't like your most extreme vehicle. Um, I would not be surprised if Ford comes out with a Tremor edition of this vehicle within the next couple years that includes, you know, like the trail control system, which is like Toyota's crawl control, sort of, uh, as well as that dual clutch rear drive unit, which is off of the Bronco Sport Badlands, which I very much like. Um, and I think I, I would love to see a vehicle just like that. Maybe they'll also give it an extra inch of clearance. That would also be really nice. But for right now, I would say this vehicle is quite good for what it is. For adventures like this, it is just fine. But we're not done yet. We have one more thing to do where we're gonna test out all of the different drive modes and see how they compare against the Subaru. This is what we call the bowl. It's basically a deep section which we get to climb out of and it's both slippery and one of the wheels will lose traction. In doing so, we can see how these all-wheel drive systems respond to slippery conditions. It is basically a stress test between the Ford and the Subaru. Which is better? I hope to find out. Okay, so we are gonna try to climb this hill without using X mode. So here we go, we'll see how it how it goes. Okay, I'm giving it more. Nope, not enough. <laughs> I'm going to um, now put it into X mode one, which is snow and dirt, and we're gonna see how it does. See that power shifting around as it climbs? Getting up and over, no pro oh, you're good, you're good. a little bit more of a problem. It's trying to shift power around. It's struggling. It's pushing power to the right wheel. All right, so for this take, we are going to engage in X mode, but we're going to deep snow and mud. And we're going at that slower pace to see if the car can do it by itself without giving more of that momentum and um, laying it on the gas. Approaching the problem spots. And you know what? Oh, actually not that bad. Give it a little bit more gas, see what it does. And if it can get any traction, oh, we're getting it. Ah, there it goes. All right, woo. <laughs> awesome. This truck has an advantage in the fact that it has the Falcon Wild Peaks. They are a more aggressive all-terrain tire. However, Carlina has totally ripped up the course. Not her fault, it's just the nature of these systems. Um, so I actually have a harder time of it. We're gonna start with no mode at all. Now let's see how this individual wheel braking kicks in, if it does at all. So Carlina has torn up the course just by nature of having pre-run it, and I'm running Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws, which are a more aggressive tire. So I do have a slight advantage, but I also have a disadvantage. Huh. Just climbed right up. That was no problem at all. So those of you who get a non-FX4 Maverick, yeah, not so bad. But now let's see how the other drive modes respond. Because if you buy an FX4, you get two additional drive modes. They actually swap out the eco and the sport modes with mud and sand. Sand being more like a desert runner setting, which allows for more wheel spin, and mud, which reduces wheel spin. So now we're going to do the mud setting and see how this works. Now we'll see if we can see any difference on the outside. Go into that big hole on the left there that we've been digging. Feel that power transfer around the system. I'm just keeping an easy, slight throttle as it pulls itself up. Cool. I like this system. It's actually really good. Now, the one thing that I noticed on the Bronco Sport was that it didn't really matter what drive mode you were in. The computer was pretty smart in figuring out what it needed to do. So the question I don't have an answer for is if you get the FX4 package and if the logic determines that it needs that more aggressive braking, 
do you need the FX4 package for it to be able to access that MUDRUT program if it feels it needs that? That I don't know. Might be interesting to find that one out. We are now going to do sand. Now what sand does is it allows for more wheel spin. It's like the deep snow setting on the Outback Wilderness. Oh boy, that rut is getting super deep on the left. Hey Carlina, can you uh, fill in the hole on the left there a little bit for me? Oh, yeah. Now this isn't gonna create compacted dirt, of course. It's just I felt like it's a little unfair how deep that hole is getting. Sand mode automatically deactivates the auto start stop and it also deactivates um, part of the traction control system. So let's do it. Just keep the throttle on. Now we should see more wheel spin on the outside. And up we go. Now, before you jump to the conclusion to say, oh my, the Ford system is so much better than the Subarus, we have to keep in mind these aren't the exact same tires. However, they are the tires that you get when you buy it from the factory. And that is gonna be the most common way to drive a vehicle is what the OEM tires come with. We now have one more setting, and this is a setting that is on all Mavericks. It's the slippery setting. This is designed for slick surfaces. So in theory, it should cut power, but also eliminate wheel slip. And yeah, it's designed for snow and ice, stuff like that. Uh, but I think it'll be interesting to see exactly how this system alters the climb out of the bowl. Okay, slippery mode. Now, immediately the throttle feels way more lethargic. I'm, I'm doing as ma the same amount of throttle as before, but it's, it's definitely a little slower. Oh, it's cutting power. It can't do it. So moshing to wide open throttle and I'm just digging a hole. Okay, so we're going to switch that into mud ruts and let's see if we can climb out of this hole we just dug for ourselves. Come on, you got this, you got this and out. Okay, so if you're doing a steep climb and you don't have traction, well, slippery isn't exactly the best setting. So that's our look at the 2022 Ford Maverick. And the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. So one thing I think that we saw today was that this truck is surprisingly capable. And the scary thing here is that Ford has a twin clutch rear drive unit in their Bronco Sport Badlands which is not on this truck. So they could potentially make a more capable version of this truck because it's built on the same platform. At that point, it's like Subaru, watch out, right? I know, <laughs> it would be impressive. So what, what do you think is the biggest difference from your take today? The Subaru really takes it with more luxury, easy ride, smooth, everything. Yeah. But the Maverick really did perform so well. It did, on that yeah. hill climb section, you could really see the difference. We've seen this before on the Bronco Sport, where the programs are really smart in redistributing power on the system, and they are not shy about putting that power down. Granted, neither of these is gonna be as capable as a bonafide off-road machine. Mm -hmm. We know that. But for anybody who wants to just get out into nature on the weekends, maybe hit some fire roads, maybe go up a mountain. Yep. These are great, right? They're perfect. Yeah, so for Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. I'm Carlina Gore. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here. Be sure to hit that like button and we'll see you next time.